It's the wrestling show on NCW Saturday night. And of course, it wouldn't be one of these reviews without that iconic intro by Diamondback. Now that was radical, which I'll know about that. Anyway, this awesome collaboration features a match in which Diamondback puts up $260 that would see TWS's Jedi traveling across country to get to Oklahoma to collect on the offer. And I gotta say, everything as far as the visual storytelling leading up to this sequence was done fantastically. I mean, the shots were well selected. Um, everything was well framed. It was just really, really good. And there's also this wonderful name graphic work here. Very Lucas LTD there. As we go to opening tie up here, which was decent. I liked it. Solid. And I really appreciated them taking the time to sell the struggle on this tie up. And I love the talk done by Jedi. It's a great addition to the sequence. Not for long. Oh! And I absolutely love the spinning leg strike, almost like something Jamiroquai would do. This Irish whip to the corner was sold very well by Diamondback, and I'm already beginning to see fantastic trust between these two, which I love to see. There's great contact, and then this counter, that leg pick was fantastic, Look at that steps over. I think he could have moved just slightly quicker with this, and I think that that kick counter could have came a little bit faster, I cut ahead. And this was a wonderful touch of late 90s Mark Wahlberg and Lou Diamond Phillips, you know, like crazy legs. We go for a second tie up here, and I like that Diamondback immediately picked the leg. And this was an interesting hold he executed. It's a modified matted scorpion deathlock side held, very similar to the hold we normally call the X-lock. But my deductions in this sequence come from how long it took the official to assert her dominance. I know she's new, but that that took way too long in demanding a break. Um, this follow-up was fantastic, though, and I, I wanted everybody to notice that Diamondback had dropped the bag um, in this sequence, which will come into play later again fantastic contact being made here by jedi we get a double x handle and then we go to brawling on the outside which i absolutely enjoyed um i think he could have added a little variation here but i was okay with the cutoff here by diamondback which was well timed then sent him into the chairs in the audience there i like this as we follow up going down again just great contact here gonna send him into the apron and although I found the second chop to be a mite questionable, the third one was acceptable. Uh, and then from there, we get back into the ring. And here, I felt that we needed to go right into the action. There shouldn't have been a delay here, and there shouldn't have been a reset for a circle. And again, this is this just pace-wise, this just destroyed the pace of this match. Um, as we go back to tie-up, which we shouldn't have done. Um, I was happy to see a side back drop, although I think the communication was a little too visible there and a little too audible, per se. Um, the ref was there good for the count. I was happy at that. He shoots him off into the ropes and then nails that beautiful spinning roundhouse to the midsection. I, I love that kick that Jedi does. I, I think it's really good. And we get a very nice sit-out Death Valley driver. Oh, ow, where's the ref? Oh. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> and sadly, that's where I had to take a major deduction. Wrestling is a team sport. Beautiful chair shot, though, followed up, and then the ref goes down and totally redeems herself with the selling here. I mean, that that looks great. I mean, that, that was just fantastic. I was dismayed to see Jedi take an in-ring powder off of that. I think he should have already been on him and taken advantage of the situation. Uh, the scoop slam there was good in terms of selling the fatigue. Um, I was also dismayed that he would attempt, uh, just try to do a super kick. I mean, uh, but I'm glad that it was countered. Uh, the counter was fine, but the blandness of the payoff of this spot hurt my soul. No way! Oh! Uh. One, two, three! Well, he got his hands up, unfortunately. I'm 
sorry, no amount of cover up is going to save that spot. And plus, that could have been a sidewalk slam, a backbreaker, anything from that position would have been acceptable. As we go into a figure four here by Jedi, it's well executed, and I like that the referee is watching the shoulders. And I think there's just good cooperation at this point. We get the super kick, uh, not sure how it hit, and it's probably best they took it from that angle. And the cover ref took a little too long to go down for the count. The shoulders were obviously down. But, you know, I, I think that spinning kick that Jedi does would have been a far better choice. I think that could be modified into a finisher. I mean, you can call it the Padawan kick or whatever you want to call it. I just, I think there's money there. And speaking of money. The money. Hey! And this was a fantastic piece of add-on storytelling here that sets up to see Jedi having to return to collect his winnings. Now whether he'll return to Oklahoma with psychopaths like Aiden, Johnny Scream, and Caitlin Jones, only time will tell. And if you want to keep up with the aftermath as well as the latest in underground and backyard wrestling, tune in to Sportswire Radio's broadcast live on YouTube featuring the Reverend Tom Bryce along with Taft Taylor and check out the Nemesis sessions as well where you can catch all the exclusive interviews with all the wrestlers featured on the Copper Star Reviews. Hashtag All Wrestling Matters. 